Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Davis. I'm the developer of DataForge and DataForge Notebook. In this short talk, I want to talk to you about Node.js memory limitations, or how to blow up your application in 100 easy steps. This is a talk that I've given for the Brisbane JavaScript Meetup, and we're going to see how much memory we can allocate before we blow up our application. I'm going to talk a little bit about Node.js memory architecture, and at the end we'll see a nasty hack that we can use to get access to much more memory. This is a fairly typical Node.js out of memory fatal error. When this happens, your program has aborted. So I'm sure many of you have seen a screen like this before. The question I'm asking now is, how far can we push Node.js? What actually are the, the limits of memory that we can allocate? This is a question that I wanted to answer for myself. Now, of course, you can just Google for this information, but I figured it might be more interesting to write some code to test the limits myself. In the past, I've worked on apps that have blown up due to exhausting memory. At one point, I even worked for months tracking down memory leaks in a production app, and that was a grueling experience. But the inspiration for this short talk came from working on my book, Data Wrangling with JavaScript. This is published by Manning, and it's going to the printer right now. I was working on chapters seven and eight. Uh, they were dealing with large data that's too big to fit in memory and, and how you can deal with it and how you can work with it. And it made me curious to understand where the limits of memory in Node.js actually are. So why do we run out of memory? Well, firstly, if you're trying to load a data set that is larger than available memory, then you will most certainly run out of memory. Of course, another problem is memory leaks. And that's where your application would normally uh, fit into memory, but due to holding uh, onto references for objects, uh, your allocations aren't being free. So you're building up memory over time that's not being garbage collected. Normally in Node.js, we don't have to explicitly free our allocations. It provides us with a garbage collector, but it's not that difficult to accidentally maintain a reference that we should have gotten rid of. Uh, and that keeps the allocation in memory that would have otherwise been freed. Over time, memory usage grows. Uh, in a long-lived app, this could take weeks or even months. Um, but after mem memory is exhausted, your application will blow up. Before we get into testing the actual limits of memory in Node.js, let's take a quick look at Node.js memory architecture. The memory consumed by a Node.js application falls into one of these three areas, code, stack, and heap. Code obviously is where the code is stored. Stack is where the function call stack is stored. Uh, local variables are allocated here. Heap is where dynamic allocations are stored. And here you find your strings, objects, arrays, things that you've dynamically allocated. And it's heap memory that we're gonna be talking about today. The Node.js heap is composed of two sections. This is because allocations are divided into two generations. Newer allocations happen in new space, also known as younger generation. This is a small amount of memory from one to eight megabytes. It is very fast to allocate and to reclaim space. Garbage collection here happens frequently. Allocations that survive garbage collection in new space are promoted to old space or older generation. Old space is fast to allocate, but very slow to reclaim space. Garbage collection here is slow and it happens infrequently. Okay, it's time to run some code and make Node.js blow up. Looking here at some pseudocode that shows what I'm gonna be doing. Basically, we're just gonna loop and allocate until we exhaust all available memory. The key here is that I'm calling process.memoryUsage and I'm logging the result. This shows how much heap has been used by the app. Then we just wait until the app blows up and the last line that was logged tells us how much memory we had allocated to that point. I've run this test on my eight gigabyte Windows 10 laptop. I'm using 64 bit Node.js. Do you have any idea how much memory it's gonna allocate before it blows up? Well, it's not as much as you might think. A 64 bit app can theoretically access up to 16 terabytes of memory. Not so by default with Node.js. Here's a log of my test run. All my tests seem to converge at around about 1.4 gigabytes. So basically before I get to 1.4 gigabytes allocated, the program dies and I get the fatal out of memory error. I'm gonna show you that live in a moment. You might ask why memory is so limited in Node.js, but I'm afraid I don't have an answer to that. In my research, I haven't found anything substantially that explains why this limit is in place. My best guess is that it's some sort of historical artifact, that the V8 engine was designed to run in the browser and it was designed to be 32-bit. And there's some holdover from that, some, some legacy. It was then refactored to work in 64-bit, but the limitation survived for whatever reason. Okay, who wants to see me blow up Node.js? 
There you go. We almost got to 1.4 gig, and then we got the Node.js fatal error. We can use this parameter max old space size to increase the amount of heap memory that we can access. In this example, I've set the parameter to 6,000, which means six gigabytes of memory. This is actually a parameter to the V8 JavaScript engine that underlies Node.js. If we use this, we now have memory to burn. You can see from this log that I've almost made it to six gigabytes. Let's see an actual demo of this working. So I've switched back to my console. I'm gonna run it again, but this time I'm using the max old space size parameter set to 6,000. Let's see this black magic in action. Well, we're almost at six gigabytes. And we get the Node.js fatal error. We're out of memory, but we had a lot more memory to play with there. So the big question now is how far can we take this? How big can we make this number? How much memory can we get access to uh, before we cap out? Well, I run it on my laptop uh, with a very big number. And the last number that I saw reported was 47 gigabytes allocated. But after that, my laptop stopped responding and I had to do a forcible reboot on it. So I don't recommend trying, uh, trying this at home. Don't try this on your PC because you might do some damage to it. Um, but that gives you an idea of how much, uh, how much you can push it. And um, you can probably, if you did this on a desktop rather than a laptop, you could probably go quite a bit further than that. Well, now in theory, I can push my memory usage up to 16 terabytes. But in practice, I can't do that because once we exhaust physical memory on the device, which is uh, eight gigabytes for this laptop, the virtual memory system is then gonna kick in and we're gonna start uh, moving out pages of memory out to the hard drive. So now we're only limited by the amount of hard drive space that we've got. And I definitely don't have 16 terabytes of hard drive space in this laptop. So, so that's my limitation now. And that's the reason why I can't push it any more than 47 gigabytes. Of course, you probably shouldn't rely on that parameter max alt space size. That is a dirty hack. Um, we don't know if that parameter is going to exist in the future, so we don't. We probably don't want to depend on it. It's much safer to focus on how to fit your application into memory uh, without using that parameter, without using the hack. And how do we do this? Well, to start, don't ever load your entire data set into memory. Make sure you only ever load it in manageable chunks. We've got to look out for memory leaks. Make sure you manage and relinquish your references. If you retain references to your allocations, the garbage collector can't do its job. So don't do that. You need to monitor your memory usage. This is super easy. You just routinely call the function process.memoryusage that we looked at before, log the result and render a chart. You can then easily see the trend over time and you can see if memory is increasing over time. If it is, you've got a problem. Lastly, if all else fails, you can start decomposing your monolithic app into separate processes. And of course, I'm talking about microservices. This is better for scalability. Uh, each process can potentially run on a separate CPU and each process can have its own separate memory space. So in theory, each process uh, can access 1.4 gigabytes, which is the, the limit that I've seen in Node.js. Decomposing your application into microservices is a good architecture to help simplify an ever-growing application. So it's gonna have positive benefits for the design of the architecture of your system. My book, Data Wrangling with JavaScript, has two whole chapters on the topic of getting your app to fit in memory with many tips and tricks. You can also learn about how to analyze and chart metrics from your app, like memory usage. So to learn more on this topic, please buy my book. Well, that's it. Uh, there's some links here to code. First link is the memory limit testing code. So you can grab that if you want, and you can try this for yourself. See if you get the same sort of results that I do. And there's also some interesting articles listed there that you can read to kind of learn more about memory in Node.js and garbage collection. Thanks for listening.